So this conversation, Yanni, a long time coming. I am privileged to have this gentleman in studio. And of course, Book Circle, that means he has books out. So we're going to be looking at this particular book that is, you can't talk about the book without talking about him because it's, it's him. It's his life. I'm talking about Robert Burali and the book we're looking at today is A Mask Off from the strip club to the pulpit. Hi, how are you? Very well, thank you. How are you doing? <laughs> you know, most people, have you ever been told, or people who've never had this conversation yes. straight from you, or just have had, not just when your stories in that too, yes. instead of from the strip club, yes, from the strip, strip club to the pulpit, mm -hmm. where went your, who your stripper? People think I was a stripper. <laughs> well, if you look at my body, I don't think I can be a stripper. I don't think you cannot not be. <laughs> 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 yes, but it was quite an amazing journey. Yes. Yes. So you got like probably the best education that you could. You grew up well. Yes. Did you grow up in church? Was mom, dad? Mom and dad took us to Sunday school, mm -hmm. like every other nice, good family. Yes. Yes. So I thank God that happened because mm -hmm. when you, that seed that was planted mm -hmm. when I was young, we, I didn't feel like going to church every Sunday. But there was something attached to it. Well, if you come to church, we'll go to the club after this, the country club, and have lunch and everything. But the idea was when that seed was planted, that is the seed that held me and is speaking for me today. That Even when true. I had gone into these dark alleys and, yes. and all that. Emily so Sanders it's what song. you plant <laughs> that keeps calling you back, yes. calling you back. And I thank God for that. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned that you, you had a good life. I did, by the special grace of God. Yes. 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 And then you went to school out of the country. Right. And that is where everything just took a wild turn. When I went to the UK, as a black man, every white woman wants you. I, want to, I was about to say something. That I know, but this is a morning show. <laughs> <laughs> it was right here. I read your mind. Trust me. <laughs> it was right here. I know. Self-control. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I went there. Great time. New, new people. New friends. Good, crazy ones, bad ones. Mm -hmm. And, um, well, as an excited man, you start now dangling in many things. Yeah. And I started going to some nightclubs. And then we went and went into these other pony places. And um, at, at some point, I went to visit some friends in London and was there for about a couple, uh, about two weeks. Mm -hmm. And we were taken to a place called Chinatown. Mm -hmm. Chinatown is where all the strippers are. Yeah. And um, the lust of the eyes and the flesh was ignited right there. This was the very first time we're seeing anything like this. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, strip club especially, you know, when you go pay and uh, you go to a peep show and then you pay and the thing lifts and then when they're just about to show everything, it goes down and you start looking for more money, you know, so it entices you. Yes. So that ignited something in me that should never have been ignited. And that's how my journey started. So when I went back to a town where I used to stay called Leicester, mm -hmm. so I started looking for the Chinatown of Leicester or something yeah. that offers the same. Did you find it? What are, what are you talking about? Almost in every corner. I mean, this, um, the, the first world countries, yes, we do admire them and they've done great things. But also they're very liberal. So you see these things almost in every corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you come back home mm -hmm. and we are not very popular with such. It probably maybe it took a while before you found one. Actually, when I came back, mm -hmm. there were strip clubs all over. They, they, they yes. So the, there was a season in this country yes. where strip clubs were there. I think there was Applebee's, there was these, there was oh, Barrels. Yes. So and that the, season. Mm, mm. So I came back and found one on Langata Road. Okay. Dark. <laughs> My goodness. Has to be dark. Yeah, very dark. And like a red light there, a green light there, a purple one under the seat. Mm -hmm. And, and they, when you enter a strip club, there is a spirit of lust that is in the air. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you enter, somebody's dancing on somebody's laps. And the crazy thing is that some women take their husbands there for their birthday. Yeah. Yes, I did meet some mm. of them. And when I look back now as I teach on these things, when you take your husband there, when you go back to your bed, he will want you to do th some of those things. And you can't do them. No, you can't. Because some of those girls may be even on drugs. You don't even have a pole. Exactly. And if you try that, you'll break her back. And a then you from the bed to the casualty. Yes. You know? So when I got there... And then it has this thing. It's a spirit, by the way, Mwikali. Let me call you Mary then. Who, have you ever been called Mary by anybody? Yes. Okay, Mwikali. Let me stick to Mwikali. <laughs> I've seen your eyes. <laughs> 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 
So what happens, the uh, strippers come yeah. and dance right in front of you. They sit on your laps mm -hmm. and they never take their eyes away from you. That is when the connection happens. Oh. So even when you drive out, mm -hmm. you have that mental picture. And many a times, and anybody watching who is struggling with this will tell you, they will leave the strip club and they said, this is the last time I'll be here. I will never come back here. I've spent so much money. It's filthy. Trust me, Mukali. 24 hours later, you're there. You will go back because that's where the connection happens. They sit and look at you. They lick their lips and they they do some funny things and they bite your ear. Now you're biting a lawyer man's ear. You know it's ooh. You feel those things. <laughs> but what did this do to you? You know. Uh, so you're here, you're experiencing this, yeah. and you can't stop yourself. You right. keep going back. Yes. But there's something more that's happening to you. You go into debt. Yeah. Because the addiction is not a respect of your pocket. Mm -mm. You've got to understand that. Mm -hmm. Whether you're broke today, you have no money today, the strip club, the addiction, and many other addictions. That's why you get somebody in drug addiction, they would even sell us a fork or a knife yeah. to the last thing in the house. So the addiction tells you, keep coming back. But your wallet and your addiction are not in agreement. Were you working? Yes. Okay. But, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It, no, it doesn't. Trust yeah, me. It, it doesn't. doesn't matter. Okay. Because you may earn 50000 Yes. Your addiction demands for you to spend 100000 How much were you spending in a night? I sp one crazy night, I spent 100000 What? What happens? <laughs> Is it for the... Were you drinking? Ego. I've never drunk. And? Ego. Oh. The man next to you is giving 50 shillings. Okay. You're going to give 100. Okay. I mean, you okay. enter the place and every stripper wants to dance mm. for you. Okay. Not realizing whoever is giving 50 shillings will go home comfortable. Yes. You're spending 100,000, you're in debt. But they don't care. No. So if this guy's removed 50, the other guy 100, me, I'm going to remove 1,000. It's an ego. A man, man is an ego. Even when you go to the gents, when you're on the urinal, urinal, urinal mm -hmm. you turn left and right. We are comparing. Mm. It's an ego thing. So you want to be the guy on top, you know, you understand? Yes. But this is, I've studied it later and I've studied it deeply by the special grace of God. It's a demonic thing. It entices you in the lustful area. It makes you go into debt. And then when you leave, you feel empty. So a three-pronged attack. I'm telling you, Anybody, I don't care how big they are, mm -hmm. how rich they are, yeah. how powerful they are. Mm -hmm. Any person who goes into a strip club is one of the emptiest people you'll ever meet. Because what you're doing, you're looking for affirmation. But it's not genuine. You're paying for it. If I pay you, you will tell me anything that tickles my fancy. That's true. Yeah. So you know you are empty within, but I've paid you. So tell me what I want to hear. Yes, you know? and they will. Trust me. They will. They need you to come back tomorrow. There's, there's no happy ending at the strip club. No. So you go out here looking for your happy ending. Yes. But sometimes it's not that. You just go home feeling disgusted. But tomorrow you'll go back. I talk to young people. I mean, this is an early show. Yes. Even for young men who struggle with other things like masturbation. Yes. They say, you know, I'm not going to do it again. Mm. Seven years later, still they're still doing it. it. And the Bible says, I will bless the work of your hands. Not Ooh. that way. We will be back <laughs> after this short commercial break. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. This is Full Circle with Mikali. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Full Circle with Mukali. Robert Burali in the building. He's a transformational speaker. He is a pastor. He's a life coach. He's an author. All of those things put together. And he just dropped a bomb on all of us, but it's fine. We have moved on swiftly. Let's talk about <laughs> be <laughs> you being in debt. All right. And what was the craziest thing that you ever sold to just get that money to go back to the strip club? For me, I didn't sell. What did you do? I went into heavy borrowing. Ooh. Yeah, there's a difference. I didn't sell. Okay, okay. I didn't sell. Uh -huh. I don't believe in selling things. Mm -hmm. It's it's another old demonic behavior. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can sell everything to your last pair of socks. So I didn't struggle on that. I didn't sell. I just went into borrowing. And you got into debt. What? Like crazy. I would need the AMF. 
what? you're talking about the Kenyan government. Well, I, I, I needed the IMF. Uh -huh. um, because, um, you know, when you go to a strip club, or it's, think with me somebody who is into alcohol addiction mm -hmm. and they drink alcohol worth 15,000 a bottle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Next week, even if they don't have the money, they will not go to an alcohol for 100 shillings. No. They will still need to maintain the 15,000 bottle, al uh, bottle alcohol. Yeah. So what do you do? If you don't sell, you'll borrow. And that's what happens. And, and it's, it's, it's like um, a rope on your neck and you put it on yourself and then you tighten it as you go on. You tighten it as you go on. You know, it's what you call putting your finger on a self-destruct button. Mm -hmm. You know it's killing you, but you just can't stop it. And that is why anybody with an addiction who is watching, you will never stop it by yourself. You need to look for somebody who you can trust and be accountable to. Because you'll only stop for two days mm -hmm. and then go back for another five years. I mean, the first one year, I didn't want to stop. Mm -hmm. But from year two, I really wanted to stop. So every time I said, I'll stop, I'll stop, I'll stop. Seven years later, I was still doing it. Yeah. I mean, I was a big kahuna. You enter the strip club and they think the president is coming. So the ladies are screaming, the men are jealous. And you have to appoint to prove. Yeah, but to who? But at that time, yes. Yes. That's what we call being empty. Mm. You're trying to prove a point to people who don't care. They don't. Even the guy was given 50 shillings. He's there with his lustful behavior. Mm. And the wife is helping him behave badly. Mm -hmm. And then when you go to the bedroom, you're telling your wife, I want you to do like that other woman. The yes. wife tries to turn to put her leg here. And then the ambulance is called. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I so do. So you are trying to prove a point to... People don't really care. But the truth of the matter, looking back now, yeah. it was emptiness. Mm. So you start when you go home, you're going to sleep. And when you walk around in town, you're like, do these people know that I've been in a strip club? So you go into a life of paranoia. So you can't even do anything. You don't want to go to an office. Mm -mm. Because if everyone just looks at you, maybe they're admiring my silver fox. And I'm thinking that they're, they're thinking about my strip club. Yes. And they don't know. Yeah. So it just breaks you from deep within. So you become a public success, but a private failure. What was your turnaround? At what point were you like, you know what, I'm done. What did you have to do? One day I woke up feeling very empty, as empty as empty could be. Okay. Driving and I'm listening to a secular station, park my car, get some apple juice, never forgotten this, someone hurling them, come back to the car, put on the car. Somehow the station goes to a, a gospel station mm -hmm. and this pastor is interviewing this lady and this lady is somebody known to me mm -hmm. I listened to a story she had lost <coughs> her husband mm -hmm. and the relatives were saying she's the one who killed the husband they mm -hmm. mistreated her da, da, da. so i called her and i said that's after the show i said man i feel empty she's come to my office and i went and we talked and she could pick that i was suicidal oh. and she says you know the pastor i was talking to go and see that pastor i sat with that pastor it was on a thursday until midnight when he led me to Christ. And the interesting thing, when I went back, did this, I joined House of Grace Church. Now watch this, Mwikali. Okay. House of Grace Church at that time was actually opposite this strip club. So basically, I just crossed over. Quite literally. Yes, crossed over. The strip club faced the gate to where House of Grace was. I'm trying to visualize what is on the other side now. I can't see anything. Nice, yeah. I just see House of Grace. Yes. <laughs> and you can imagine. So I go to church. And Bishop David Moradi never met me. Mm -hmm. He calls me. I was mm -hmm. in a white trouser and a pink shirt. I mean, dressing is my thing. Clearly. Sometimes I'm so, so smart, I'm jealous of myself. Are you going to do this now? Okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so he picks me and okay. says, I don't know who you are. Uh -huh. But if I be a man of God your name will be known in this country. I don't know how. And then he finished by saying, mm -hmm. if I be a man of God. Ooh. And that's it. I'm serving that man and his ministry mm -hmm. until this day. And this relates to what you just said at the beginning of this conversation, that it was a seed that was planted in you. When I was a young boy. When you were a young boy. Yeah. So it was easier for you to make that transition. Absolutely. Because it was in you. It was planted already. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, I'm sh my daughter has been raised in church. I, I understand sometimes maybe these kids don't feel like going to church. Yes. But once you plant that seed, God just takes care of it. That's and true. later in life, mm -hmm. you shall see the benefits. It's not easy. You know, somebody like me coming to the public like this. I mean, this it, book it, is all over. It, I know. And it, why? You, you could because have... 
people have these conversations. I'm not saying why because it's a bad thing, you know. Yeah, so we'll know this pastor and his story is also known just, you know, within the congregants and it's just small. But then you went big. I don't, and come, you wrote, I don't come out from the club of perfect people. No. I'm just a man trying to be better tomorrow than I am today. Mm -hmm. And every pain, any mistake you do is not for you. It's for somebody else. Now, this thing happens twice. Other people attack you. I get attacks up to this day. Yes, you do. Blogs have a great time. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> I mean, I've been called Morade because <laughs> of Corona. It's like, wait a minute. How did you, like, that was just so, it was just the other day. Yes. And it's still, it's still continuing. I Absolutely. mean, when I look you up, it's one of, among the first things You'll that will abused. come up. You'll be abused. But you know what? Yeah. One person who says, my life turned around because of your story. Mm hmm for me, silence is a thousand haters. And let me tell you, if you never have people hating on you, yeah. you're like a black man in a dark room winking at a black woman and expecting a reaction. Nothing, nothing. in your life will come for nothing. Mm. It will come for nothing. So every pain, every attack is not for you. I've owned my mistakes. Yes. I will never act perfect. Even when I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's true. I'm not going to say, oh, praise the Lord, you know. I had the Holy Spirit from the age of eight. No. At the time I was dancing with women like nobody's been, just hitting them like this. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But now I'll hit and hit the Bible. <laughs> but you've got to make people understand. Yes. I don't know why people act perfect. We are not. Even the ones who attack people on social media. Mm. are actually as empty as empty could be. So they are projecting their weaknesses to other people in yeah. a bid to run away from their own. Mm -hmm. So if anybody expects me to act perfect because I preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, you will be disappointed. You know. So right now somebody is watching. Yeah. Somebody is addicted to alcohol, drugs, masturbation, uh, strip clubs, and they're wondering, will I ever get out? You know what? Yeah. If I got out, you too will get out. Mm. So if I can help one person, even if he's in Mandera or somewhere, that's, that's what life is all about. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, one day, you and I, yeah. our lives will flash right in front of our eyes and we'll be breathing our last. Will you have left an impact? If God gave you the privilege of being a, a guest of honor in your own funeral, will you like what people say? Mm. I don't want to be remembered for the suits I wear. I, I don't have good suits. Yes, you do. But I want somebody to say, because he walked, he treaded the, the, this earth, my son, my daughter managed to get something. But through your vulnerability, yes. through you opening up, you have healed somebody else. And please tell people to stop acting perfect. Please stop acting perfect. I, mean, you can, I think you can repeat that. This, this one. As well. Ladies and gentlemen, the problem with acting perfect is that you kill yourself every day. Yeah. There is nothing as painful as people praising you on your perfection because you have hidden your imperfection. Mm. So just be there. I mean, Robert Brawley, you're a preacher, yes. Did you used to love strip clubs? Absolutely. Yes. My goodness, I was the big kahuna. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the UK, I would walk into a strip, I'm like, you know, I'm a black man. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And we leave it at that. Yes, we do. And, and, and all that because I'm still alive today, yeah. there's a purpose. Did the emptiness go away immediately you made the switch? No. It's a journey, Mwikali. Oh, my goodness. It's a journey now. What happens So then? the fight continues. Up to this day. Because now what happens when God sees your heart to try and get better, mm -hmm. he now removes other people from your circle and brings the right people. Okay. That's why I'll give you this story that somebody gave when I did the men's conference. Mm -hmm. A gentleman fell in a ditch. And as one person passed, he says, help me. And the guy wrote a note and said, I am a lawyer. When you get out of this place, come, I'll help you sue the company that dug this hole. Okay. And then he went on. The second person passed. And this guy says, help me, help me. And this guy wrote a note and said, I am a doctor. When you get out, I'll heal you. Mm. And the third person was passing. And this guy says, help me. And this guy didn't write any note. He jumped into the hole. And this guy says, how stupid are you? Now we are two of us stuck here. <laughs> he says, no, I have been in this hole before. I know the way out. Oh. So any hole we have been into yes. is not for us. Mm -mm. Is to go back to the same hole. Hold the hands of these people and say, I will show you the way out. It's as simple as that. And that is what you're doing. But it's painful because you have people who use what you say against you. They will always come back with that stories from back Absolutely. when. And that's why I take my bishop's advice. He told me something very powerful. Mm -hmm. He says, I have a soft heart but a thick skin. Yeah. Keep on moving. Yeah. Because on that day, you will answer to yourself. You and I today and everybody, these guys I'm seeing behind this lady, that mm -hmm. gentleman there in, a, in an orange shirt, <laughs> and this lady with something yellow top. 
guess what? We yes. are all one day closer to our death. That's true. Somebody's breathing their last right now. Somebody's planning to go out next week, but they're dying at 4 p.m. today. We have to make it count. Now. That is the good, the bad, and the ugly. God never wastes anything we have gone through. Never. My marriage failed after one year, two days. Do people mock me? I mean, I go on TV to discuss apple juice. You get somebody on social media. You, what are you telling us about apple juice? You're not married. I mean, I can even discuss my own shoe. What are you telling us about your shoe? You're not married. Satan. <laughs> but you see... <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I've seen, and I don't know how you take it, but um, thick skin, maybe. Yes. Does it get to you at some point? Can I be honest with you? Yes. It used to. Okay. It used to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it took me close to three years to get to a place, oh, you're speaking, it's fine. Wait, even the 20 million year COVID, quote unquote, it didn't get to you? I was only worried about my daughter. Okay. Not me. When I video called my daughter from the hospital and I saw she's okay, I was like, okay, fine. You know what, guys? Let me sleep. You understand? Yes. But what I do, every time you go through pain, look for the blessing in the pain. Okay. Every time the devil comes to your address, look at the hand of God. Because what happens is that when the enemy can sense when there's something that is about to happen to you, something mm. good. Mm. So the enemy does not come where God is coming from. Mm. The enemy comes from the opposite direction. So as you're turning to receive that which God is about to lay on your hands, the enemy shouts so that you turn on that side. Yes. There's a gentleman in the Bible who walked on water, but he only walked on water as long as he's focus was on Jesus That's true. but then the storms and the waves started raging and the mistake he did he started looking away and he started sinking That's and true. drowning so I want to tell somebody right now you have to but there's good criticism let, let me tell you not everybody on social media is a hater yeah you have to understand the foundation in which somebody is saying something there are some things there's what we call constructive criticism Peak that. that are there to make you be a better person mm -hmm. because Better people are, have teachable spirits. Mm. You understand? Yes. Foolish people are not teachable. So differentiate between a hater, you understand? Yeah. And somebody who is giving you what we call positive criticism. And positive criticism, we call it, can yes. also hurt. Mm. But it hurts momentarily, but builds you long term. Absolutely. Haters. Y yes. Backbite you from the back. <laughs> And they could be the closest to you. And the only thing that is interested in your backside yes. is the toilet. Like Kush Tracy's flash it away. <laughs> you are very passionate about men. Right. You have been very yes. loud about that. But now you've taken it to another whole level. Absolutely. Because now you have a show on yes. TV. It's called Oh Man. Man. And just before we get into it, please, can we just see the trailer promo? of this show season premiere today it's matters men do you feel there's an attack on men are we feeling attacked there's a heavy attack on the boy child if we don't stand at all i don't think we will survive this attack do men fear successful women how would you handle a successful woman uh, the, just the way i handle my wife be the source of inspiration elevate her it all boils down to the character of a person your wife is successful chris Yes. Yes, she's a But this woman. one is a special case. They work together. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of these things that you did that catapulted you to where you are? Never ever keeping time. That is still my slogan to date. As in, I never keep time. <laughs> You're always, always ahead of time. Yeah, and, and it's worked for me. You have to believe in yourself first. If you don't believe in yourself, number one, no one else will. Oh, men. Premieres Friday, 16th April at 8.30 p.m. Hey, oh man. man, what is this about? This is a show that tackles matters men. Okay. Because we are people who walk around with our death certificates in our pockets. We don't talk. We are dying silently. Yeah. So we want to have a show that will tackle issues of men. Uh, and we, because we know what you're going through. So a man watching will connect with us yeah. and say, you know what? We're leaving no man behind. These guys are showing their scars. We're discussing very pertinent issues that affect men, mm -hmm. the boy child, so that we stop dying. 77% of the suicides in this world are about men. That's true. You know, men, con men women contemplate suicide. Men Actually commit suicide. Do it. That's true. Yeah. 
So we need to, because a society that has broken men leaves women exposed and children vulnerable. That is true. At the end of the day, we're supposed to be protecting our families. Mm. And a strong man is not necessarily a perfect man. Mm -mm. In fact, people who say they're perfect, I run away from mm -mm. them. <laughs> a strong man is the one who understands, I may not get there, but I'll keep on moving. I will not step. Oh, man. Yeah. Every Friday. Every Friday. 8.30 p.m. I'm telling you, only on Switch TV. On Switch TV. It's the in best show in Eastern Central Africa, <laughs> south of the Sahara and north of Limpopo. <laughs> hey! <laughs> you know, it feels like we're getting a sneak peek as women yes. into men's conference. You know how protective Absolutely. guys are. And it's a show that, that every woman must watch. So it feels like this is for us as well. Absolutely. To just see what our men are going through. And who is to say that we cannot invite a lady on the show mm -hmm. to discuss some things that maybe ladies wish men would know? I want to be on the Absolutely. show. Absolutely. <laughs> so it's it's something that will encompass everybody. Every okay. woman must watch as well. Okay. And every man must be on the glue to the screen. Ah. Uh, so before I let you go. Yes. We have books here. This is the book that we've been talking about the whole time. Everything is in here. Right. You've covered some very difficult topics as well. Ooh, yes. <laughs> you know, your siblings, your brother passing on as well. So it's, it's very raw. It is. Very raw. How can people get this? This is, now this one, this is powerful. So this is a 365 with, 365 with the course. So we have teachings. On various things on life, leadership, relationships, yes. purpose, yes. identity. Cheating. <laughs> yes, it's all there. <laughs> How does she pick her phone call when you're around? Mm. Kunanyesha, and it's not raining. Yes. Usinyongeleshe, ndakupigia badai. They are all in here. How can people get this book? There's a phone number. Uh -huh. It's 716 Say it again. Yes. Zero seven one six seven three three six seven two. Don't call. Just text your name and say the book that you want. They're all going for a thousand shillings each, and somebody will get back in touch with you. Within Nai Nairobi, it's free delivery. Mm -hmm. uh, outside Nairobi, of course, there's a fee okay. for the courier services. Are we going to be seeing any more new books? Yes. Uh, during the corona, I wrote six books. In for a treat, guys. Yes, yes. Thank you so much. I'll tell you the one through. that is coming up. Ah, uh -huh, please. The day the world ended. Allah. Yes. The day the world ended. The day our conversation came to an end. <laughs> we need more time, Burali. But thank you so much for coming through. We are taking a very short commercial break. We will be right back. This is Full Circle with Mikali. <laughs> 